Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Judy and you are watching Running So and So. Today I want to talk to you about blouses because it's April. So can you mean one thing? It is so April blouse 23. Not so blouse April as I wanted to call it. So April blouse 23. This is a wonderful challenge that is being run by Gabrielle, who is the cloth edit, and she has an Instagram feed and she has a YouTube channel. Links in the description box. And by for those of us in England and Yorkshire, our lovely Ruan, who is the Yorkshire Sew Girl, and she is also the Yorkshire Sew Girl on Instagram and on YouTube. And you need to check out their vlogs. I will do my best to link them in the description box below. So what is a blouse? Now I decided that in order to check exactly what a blouse is, I'd get out my dictionary. So here we go. One times Chambers Dictionary, which the stepmother gave me when I went to university. A blouse. It is a shirt-like garment for women. A short, loose jacket gathered into a waistband. Part of a soldier or airman's battle dress. A loose, belted outer garment worn by especially French workmen arranged in loose fold and can puff out loosely. So that's the definition of a blouse. It sounds very strict, doesn't it? Very, very strict. So I had a little listen to Gabrielle over on her channel and this is, she has described that a shirt is very much, it's very crisp, very formal. It'll be quite straight. And it is the sort of like shirting fabric. It's, the shirting fabric is stronger and it's sort of got like a crisp feel to it. And what she's saying is you can take your shirt pattern and you can turn that into a blouse. So a blouse will at times have buttons up the front, buttons up the back. It will have a cuff, whether it is a narrow cuff, a deep cuff, a double cuff where it's folded back. It could even be held together by cufflinks. And you could even make those cufflinks. Just think, you could extend the cuff on your blouse. You could fold it back. You could create your own cufflinks with a little fabric rose or fabric tie of some description and I am going off on a tangent. So moving from a shirt to a blouse it is how the garment is styled and for a blouse we're looking for something a little bit more soft. We're looking for something that is draped. Now I've seen ladies blouse patterns and they are, it, it's your choice of fabric can turn it from a shirt to a blouse because you move, you could have a very formal what looks like a lady's shirt. You could put a lovely soft drapey viscose or cotton lawn into it with an uber floral design and suddenly it doesn't look like that shirt. It doesn't look like that work shirt that you thought you were going to make. It looks totally different. And your collar stand has gone from that very firm upright and over to a very soft gentle up and over and the use of different buttons. Changing the buttons from a, on a pattern that was designed to be a shirt just, just uh, you've, you've used a different fabric completely, a woven, as I've just described, like a viscose. Just changing those buttons, you're taking away that formality. You've got to think that the garment is less formal. It's a gentle, soft, flowy, comfortable garment. I'm not going to say it is uber frilly, but if you want a frilly blouse, you can have one. You might have a blouse that is quite crisp because you might have a, you might have taken your shirt pattern, and you might have thought. But I really like it. How can I change it? Well, as I've just said, you can extend your cuffs by one, fold them over like a man's double cuffed shirt and create your own cuff link where you put two buttonholes, one on the top, top bit of the cuff and one on the bottom and you can feed something through it and create your own cuff link. It could just be a bow tie. You could just make a nice little strip, put it through and tie it into the most divine bow. Or you could think that actually I want something that is crisp and firm, but I want it to be a blouse and not a shirt, but I love the crisp fabric. You could take your pattern and you could, if you wanted to, add some ease in across the chest and you could create pin tucks. So you create fullness across the top where your yoke is. And to do that, you take your yoke piece and you literally cut it equally, maybe from the middle, maybe um, you've got the middle one, you could open the middle out and maybe one, maybe five openings, open them up by maybe half an inch each and then just fold them over and you create some little pink tucks and you could have a lovely pin touch top, a full bottom and from that rect and you could then just leave your sleeves. If you wanted to, you could add some fullness to your sleeve. 
to do that, it's very easy. You take your sleeve pattern, you cut up from the bottom, you open your sleeve out. You will need to cut it up three, so it would be one up the middle, then one either side, open it out, and then you will redraw the head of the sleeve, keeping those markings, gather the top in, and you've created a lovely full balloon sleeve. And just gently shape the bottom of your sleeve. So that is it, a blouse. It needs to be softer and floatier. It's as simple as that. But you can alter that pattern any way you want. So what am I planning to make for So April Blouse 23? Well, I've got a couple of things up my sleeve and I've got them just here. Of course, the first blouse I would might just wish to make is the Regalia Blouse by So House 7. And I am going to make it again and I have got some fabric here. I've got a choice of two. Now I bought this beautiful fabric and it is pre-washed, ready to go. It's a lovely cotton cut lawn and it's by a French company called Fru Fru. Here it is. It's ever so nice. It's quite sheer so I can actually see you through this. I can look at this and I can think, oh look, there's the red light of my camera. Straight through there. But here it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a lovely teal colour. I better not show it to Claire from Stitch Hem, so she might want to take it because it's teal. I love the way Claire says she likes teal. She knows it's for her because it's teal. Sorry, Claire. I do love that. But it is a lovely, simple cotton lawn. So I've got two metres of this, but it is 115 centimetres wide, so I might be lacking on quantity for that. Alternatively, I have here... This goes Dobby from... Atelier Brunette. Now I may not have enough of this. I don't know. I've got just about a metre 25 of this so I might be lacking slightly for this one. But it is beautiful. Having said that, if either of these are too small, I have plenty in my stash. Because with So April Blouse 23, there's no rule on fabric. You can take that duvet cover where the top's gone but you love the pattern and you could create a top and from the... You could create a blouse from the bottom piece. You can take something from your stash or you can go out and treat yourself to something really nice. And that is what I have done for my second blouse. My second blouse choice. And this is the blouse I have wanted to redo for years. In 1983, I bought a copy of Vogue Patterns magazine, which is Vogue 8620. I'm just checking to the side to make certain this is bang in the middle. Do you not just like that? Look at that red one. Look at that red. Look at that blouse there. And that is what I want to make. Now I made that back in 1983 and I made it out of raw silk. The back of this blouse, here are the line drawings, and we are looking at view A. Sorry, I'm just looking to the side to make certain that I've got view A in the camera. There it is. View A, it is buttoned up the back and it has a buttoned cuff. Now, I have some fabric for it, but I am not 100% certain that it's the right fabric to use. And I have got the new fabric from Guthrie and Garney. Now, the reason I am wondering, is it the right fabric? It's because it isn't gathered, it's pleated. So you can see here, the fabric is here. So what you do is you actually pleat the fabric like so. And it's, will the pleats fall in the right place? And doing that now, what do we all think? Do we think it would pleat? So it pleats that way. Can you see the pleats I've created just here? Four little pleats. Now I will be able to see this when it comes back up. I can't really see it at the moment. I can see it from where I'm looking at it down here but you have to pleat the fabric and then you cut out the shapes. It's actually a fairly, fairly straightforward make to do. It, the blouse is made by pleating the fabric vertically. So the pleats go sort of down like so. And then you cut out the two shapes for the side pieces here. And then the front piece is slightly wider and that is pleated in. It looks very complicated, but it is actually a lovely, satisfying make to do. It's an involved make. It's a make that will let you sit back and think, oh, I've done that. Is that not just lovely enough? It makes you feel really, really good. Now, 
This is a make I've wanted to make for a long, long time. I'm just going to hold it up again for you to see. And I absolutely, absolutely adore this fabric. So there it is with the red blouse. What red? Ooh, there we go. What do we think with this fabric? The fabric is the right texture for it. So it's suggesting you use soft or crisp fabric. So a viscose would be fine. <coughs> when this pattern was actually written, viscose wasn't on the market at all. You had polyester, polyester cotton, and that's what you had, or you had silk. So when they're saying soft or crisp fabrics, they're thinking you pop cotton poplin, or a really soft cotton lawn, or a silk, hence the crepe de chine. Silk broadcloth, a chalet, a batiste, a charmeuse, a handkerchief linen. Then they're going on to say that stri excuse me looking down, I'm reading the pattern, here you go. A striped, plaid, or obvious diagonals are unsuitable. If you're using a one-day design fabric, you should use the nap layout. Now, I am wondering whether this fabric could be too fussy. So if I don't use this fabric, it's because I suddenly decide that I think it would be better if I used just a cot just one of the Dobby viscoses that I've got from Atelier Brunette. I'm not 100% certain. But with only two weeks to go till the challenge is over, I've got to pick something. So it's going to be... A fabric from my stash or it's going to be this gorgeous fabric I have to say my heart is in using this gorgeous Rachel Parker from Guthrie and Garney the links will be in the description box for this she has some in once it's gone it's gone the next thing you need to know is how you're going to enter this challenge so you are going to enter by making your blouse and you are going to use the hashtag hashtag so April Browse 23. You are going to follow Gabrielle, who is at Cloth Edit, and you're going to follow the lovely Ruan, who is at the Yorkshire Sew Girl. And you're going to post your make between the 1st of April and the 30th of April 2023. And it's got to be up by, well, this is a clever one here, April the 30th, 11.59 for your time zone. There are so many prizes. Now, I do know that they're going to do some judging, but that's all I know. So we've got prizes from Pauline Alice, Maison Forth, The Avid Seatstress, Atelier Jupin Named. We've got them from Folkwear, Friday Pattern Company, Atelier Scamit, Now and Then, P&M, and So House 7. We've got them from the Dahlia Society, Tilly and the Buttons, Law Pierre, and Fibre Mood, Cloth edit, stitched for good, sewing in the city, pattern fantastique. First major prize is $150 from the cloth edit in a gift voucher. And six PDF patterns sponsored by I Am Named, Pauline Alice, The Avid Seamstress, Maison Fauve and Atelier Jupe. The second prize is another $150 and it is going to have three PDF patterns sponsored by Pattern Fantastique. Now, I think this is a wonderful challenge. As you know, I don't put my name to too many challenges. I am a great believer in so frugal. This is a fantastic challenge. Let your imagination run away. Look at your pattern and think, what can I do to change it? Just maybe adding some lace. Maybe you want to think, well, actually, I could just do a little run of chain stitches, hand chain stitches around the wrist. You might have an embroidery machine, you might think, well, I've got a, mo I've got a yoke on the back. Maybe I could just get a little uh, garland and put that either this way or that way on the back. You could, if you wanted to, as I explained earlier, open up your yoke and create some pleats. There's lots of different ways you can alter your blouse. You can do it in your cuff. You can add to your sleeve. You can add to your ease across the front. You could create what I used to call them a leg of mutton sleeve. I don't know what we call them these days. Where well, you've got quite a balloon at the top and a very tight cuff at the bottom. And your cuff is terribly easy to pleat. Your cuff piece, you take your cuff piece, that's it, cuff piece, slice it up and open it up the width you want your pleat. So if you want a one centimetre or half an inch pleat, you open it up half an inch, half an inch, half an inch. And then you can create lots of lovely pleats that would go all the way around your cuff. It's entirely up to you. Let your imagination run away with you. Colour blocking, different fabrics. It's entirely up to you. 
I've just shown you my plants before I go. I want to say thank you to everyone who has watched, liked, commented, and recently subscribed to my channel. I appreciate it so much. I'm now 82 away from getting to that magical 3,000 subscribers and I would really love to get to 3,000 subscribers as soon as possible. It's just a little milestone I've given myself. I think it's because that next thousand is there, isn't it? It's just there. So I'm going to put lots of notes in the description box. I, I do have a Ko-fi account and any money I earn from that goes straight back into my channel. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again later in the week for the next episode of Friday Sews and uh, how I'm doing with my blouses. And the first one I'm doing is my regalia blouse because the Vogue 8620, which I got from Etsy, will take just a little bit more work. I'll see you all soon. Happy sewing. Lots of love. Bye-bye.